Welcome to Midnight Mule FPL. I'm Midnight Mule and this is the video for Game Week 17. We're going to see what my plans are. But before that, let's see what happened in Game Week 16 in the Midnight Mule Mini League. Two teams managed to score 75 points for Game Week 16. The first of those was Tony Menash with AS Table Shakers. 75 points. Managed this with Salah, 26 points because he was captain, albeit vice captain. Sun got 17 points, Udogi 9, Pedro Porro 5, Alvarez 5. And look at that, nothing on the bench, so very good for getting the bench right. Also on 75 points, we have Cohen Prescott with Manchester City Unit, 75 points. Now you might be thinking they've got quite a low score, look at all these red arrows around. But the reason for that is they started in game week 5. And the advantage of starting a little bit later is you've got more chance of getting lots of green arrows. So it looks good. Probably won't win the whole thing, but lots of green arrows does look good. Anyway, their 75 points came from Salah, treble captain, 39 points, albeit it was on Haaland, really. Sun, 17. So I'd say that was a lucky escape. But 39 for a triple captain is pretty much all right. Uh, apart from that, on oh, Slanky got seven, and that's all. And for the bench... Nothing really to speak of. Top of the league is BV with Giga Chad FC. They got 45 points. They're currently on 1,044. And you see the top eight in our league have all got over 1,000 points, which is more than any of the content creators. So pretty well done to these eight. So the points this week were 26 for Salah as captain, vice captain. Pedro Porro got five and that's all. So no Sunny in this team. And no points on the bench, so that was good. As for me, I'm down in 156th. I got 62 points. That was Captain Salah, 26, a true captain, not a substitute. Sun got 17, Pedro Porro, 5, Trent, 4, nothing else. And for once, I left no points on my bench, so I'm pleased about that. That's the first time I think I've had no returns on my bench for a while. 62 points for the week, but I did make three transfers, so... I took a four point hit, so it was more like 58 points really. But even with that, I was in the top million for the week, so that was nice. And I've just moved inside the top million globally, so that's nice as well. So three greens and three reds in the last six weeks. So on live FPL, it highlights what the next target would be. My next target would be the half a million mark, and I'm 20 points away from that. And I'm one point inside the top one million. But what's interesting is I'm still only nine points per week away from top spot. So if I can outscore top by nine points a week, I get to win the whole thing. <laughs> 1,072 subscribers. Thank you very much for that. And thank you to everyone who watches these videos all the way through and for the very kind comments some of you have been leaving. And I don't think there's been any nasty comments, so <laughs> thank you for not leaving nasty ones either. So on the FPL Game Week website, you can look at the content creators, see how they're doing. And the top one at the moment that I like to watch is FPL Fran on 998. Also, within the top five, there's Mark Southern. He's on 976. I would be down in 50th. And if you go to this website, you can see where you'd feature with the content creators. So there I am. So I'm a little way behind FPL Heisenberg and behind Nima as well. So my transfer so far. Now, there's a few things I disagree with a lot of content creators on. And one of them is a lot of content creators generally make the transfers right at the end. But if you make transfers at the beginning of the week, you get a chance to avoid price falls and price rises. So on Saturday, I sold Darwin to get in Solanke because I thought Darwin's going to drop in price. Solanke's going to rise. I'm probably going to do it later in the week anyway, so I may as well catch the slight money difference. What's the worst that can happen? And then Johnston was injured, my keeper. He went off injured. So I brought in another keeper who hadn't yet played for the weekend, which was Sanchez. <laughs> And then he went off injured. So that's why you don't make early transfers. However, Johnston still went down in price. Sanchez did go up in price on the Saturday night. And he may play. He's flagged currently, 75% chance. I suspect he's not actually going to play this game week. But there we go. I effectively took a... Well, I did take a four-point hit to probably bring an injured player. But over the course of the season, if I keep making early transfers, I may get caught out maybe four times of injuries. And I kind of think that's all right. That's not too bad because you will be a fair bit better off financially. As for my team, I have Salah 
He's going to wear the old mule hat. He's the captain at home to Man United. Man United are quite poor at the moment. And hopefully his mate Trent's going to get me a clean sheet or some attacking returns. Vice captain is Sun. And his mate Pedro Porro is going to get me a clean sheet or attacking returns, I hope. Saka's at home to Brighton and Hove Albion. Now, no Brighton and Hove Albion always score. So probably no clean sheet there. But I think White's going to get an attacking return. So that's good. And then Palmer, he's home to Sheffield United. And then his mate's going to hopefully get me a clean sheet, even though he's probably not even going to play, but I can hope. Apart from that, I have Solanke at home to Luton, Watkins away to Brentford, and He Chan away to West Ham. And then on my bench, I've got Ariola at home to Wolverhampton. Now, currently, Ariola and Sanchez are both flagged as 75% chance of playing. If that was the true odds, then that's over a 90% chance that one of them is going to play. So I did think, am I going to make another transfer of a keeper? I decided, nah, because I think I've had one clean sheet so far this season. So even if I did take a hit and change a keeper again, I'm probably only going to get two points from them anyway. So what's the point? And then Trippier, well, he's on my bench because, of course, he's not playing. I have Saliba on my bench. If I have any good reason to think Saliba's going to play and White isn't, then I will swap those two around. But at the moment, I'm optimistic that White's going to get the full 90 minutes. And then last on the bench, I've got Jao Pedro. As for the background image, I saw in the news today that there's the Gemlid meteor shower can be seen worldwide. So here's a bit of a crazy depiction of maybe a rather violent meteor shower going on. But it's at a football stadium, so there we go. There we have it, my plans for game week 17. I'm quite pleased, selfishly, that Haaland's hopefully not going to play and also that Gordon may not play as I have neither of those players and they could both hurt me if they do well. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you have a good Game Week 17 too. And make sure you join the Mini League if you haven't already and you'll get a mention if you're top scorer or top of the league. Thanks. Bye. <laughs>